my next guest. I'm very honored and pleasure to introduce President Arthur Trabant, the president of the University of Delaware. Now, he's been there since 1968, and he received his A.B. from Occidental College, his Ph.D. in Applied Mathematics from the Cal California Institute of Technology. Prior to coming to Delaware, Dr. Trabant was vice president for academic affairs at the Georgia Institute of Technology. Before that, he was dean of engineering at the State University of New York at Buffalo. Dr. Trabant currently is chairman of the Marine Affairs Committee of the National Association of State Universities and Land-Grant Colleges. Dr. Trabant lives in Newark with his wife and child, and I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Trabant. How do you do? Good evening, Bob. I think this is interesting. And it was only just a few years ago that the situation was reversed in a sense. Yes. When you were our student on campus, in a way, I was asking you questions, and here That's tonight, right. by golly, it's reversed. I remember uh, my first year there was 1968, which was your first year, and I was very nervous sitting in the, the uh, auditorium listening to you make your opening remarks. That made two of us. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Here we are again. Ten years later. Right. A little more than that, actually, two, 14 years later. Yeah, well, let's not count too many. Okay. Dr. Tobin, I'd like to ask you some questions sure. about the university. Uh, what do you see as the primary mission of the University of Delaware? Does a university have a primary oh, mission? Oh, yes, yes, that's a good question, Bob. The primary mission is to try to provide the best possible education, educational opportunities, to the broadest cross-section of society at the least possible cost. And that's what it's really all about. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess... You're familiar with the Reagan administration's reduction of federal funds. I'm sure this is going to affect the quality of education, uh, but I'm sure the universities must be taking some actions to try to uh, rectify the situation. In light of those Reaganomic cuts, what is the university doing? The uh, biggest effect that it may have uh, if the cuts go through, as announced by uh, President Reagan, would be to make the student body at the University of Delaware more economically elite. And this, of course, would, have, uh, would mean that there'd be fewer Delawareans of the lower middle class uh, with lower incomes able to go to the university. We're very hopeful that all the cuts that President Reagan has indicated he would like in financial aid for college students will not be approved by the Congress and the Senate. Some of the things that we're doing on the campus uh, to help, we can't in any way make up the millions of dollars that would be cut by the Reagan proposals but for one thing, we will institute shortly a deferred tuition payment plan where students and their parents can defer the payment of tuition over a longer period of time with no interest charge. Hmm. Another thing that we will uh, uh, be announcing very shortly is that if you have more than one child at the University of Delaware, a full-time undergraduate student, there will be some kind of an adjustment in the tuition for the second or third child. We also hope to be able to announce some new uh, scholarship awards for next year, oh, good. perhaps as many as 50. Now, those are modest things, and believe me, in no way would make up for all the millions that would be lost, but we are trying to do things, and we'll be doing some things. Well, let's hope that the uh, cuts don't go through completely anyway. A few months, and we'll, we'll have a better answer to that one. Mm. Now, of course, not only are there federal government cuts in education funding, but there's also a cut in student, student population. How is that going to affect the university in the next decade? Well, to date, uh, we have had the opposite phenomenon occurring at the university. Right as of today, we have more qualified students applying to enter the University of Delaware more than any time in our history. And uh, we believe that the reason for that is, of course, recognizing the quality of education available at the university, the most handsome environment in which to go and have a college education. I think education, so, too. <laughs> and for our region. For our region, although the costs have increased and will increase, for our region of the United States, it's still a good educational bargain. You know, the university has retained, really attained prominence in certain areas of research and uh, scholarship. Uh, perhaps you could uh, tell our viewers oh, about no, some no, of those areas. Nothing would please me more. One of the areas where we've had leadership for the world is in solar energy with our low-cost cadmium sulfide uh, solar cells. Yes, you know, we've had Dr. Fraser Russell, who's the head of your solar unit on our oh, TV show. Oh, well then maybe uh, your viewers know all about that, but uh, I hope Fraser told you that what we decided to do would be to take a very inexpensive solar cell and try to make it more efficient. And we've had to take a role of leadership of that in our country, and we were the lead university in convincing the Department of Energy that this is one of the areas that should be emphasized in solar energy. The other uh, area in which we are a uh, leader in the world is in composite materials. And there's a great deal of interest in this. Uh, we have uh, people coming from Japan, Germany, 
as well, of course, of about 20 industrial concerns in the United States sponsoring this research, and others in our Catalytic Science Center, which is trying to get more energy uh, out of, uh, you might say, conventional fuels. And it is judged to be the finest research group and research facility at a university in this field in our country. Well, speaking of research, with the increased emphasis on defense spending in the federal budget, what implications do you see for research at the university? Well, if the uh, present proposals under President Reagan go through, there will be a shift in uh, research funding by the federal government. Uh, he proposes, President Reagan proposes, that there be a reduction, about 10 percent, in federal funding of non-defense research and about a 40 to 50 percent increase in Defense Department spending, a large part of that which would be classified secret work. At the present time, the University of Delaware does not do secret research. You instituted that ban in 68 when you arrived at the university. Yes, we, we thought it uh, was necessary and we thought it was a good idea for a university. So if this shift occurs, uh, it will mean less uh, civilian funding and more military funding. We currently, uh, the Faculty Senate, a committee of our Faculty Senate is studying this and seeing what impact it may have on the university and trying to determine if they will make a recommendation for a change in this research policy at the university. Do you anticipate that the ban on um, classified research will be removed or modified? I would say that I would expect more of a modification than a removal, but of course I'll have to wait to see what the committee recommends. Mm -hmm. Why has the university reduced undergraduate enrollment, Dr. Trevine? Oh, that was based on a very careful study uh, done at the uh, leadership of our present chairman of the board, Dr. Leonard, and, and other board members. It was felt that the physical arrangement of the campus, the size of the faculty, and the relationship of the number of people on campus to the size of the city of Newark, that we had grown too large as an undergraduate student body. And it was determined that a student body of someplace between 12,500 and 13,000 really fitted in better for the campus, uh, for our educational goals, and the city of Newark. That was the reason. Hmm. You know, the university's had an honors program for many years. What are the advantages you see of the university honors program? Is it highly selective? It is very selective, and we have students from all over the world uh, applying for admission. A uh, countable number of them coming at the end of their junior year in the high school. One of the great advantages of having it is it means that Delawareans no longer have to go out of state to get what is called an honors education. The other is that uh, when you're on a campus and you have honor students, they indeed enrich the whole educational environment and all students benefit by the stimuli from these students. It also uh, is a challenge for the faculty. And this is, this is great because the faculty really enjoy being challenged by the questions and uh, the inquiring of, the, of these students. Many of these students are doing quite sophisticated research as a uh, junior and senior students at the university. Hmm. Dr. Trevant, what are some of the new areas of academic programs that the university is getting into? Well, I would see in, uh, probably in two areas more emphasis in the future. One would be in the area of food processing. I think this is going to become more and more uh, important. It's my opinion that we probably will find that we have more raw food supplies than we're capable of processing and putting on the market in uh, 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 safe and convenient and cheap ways. Now the other is a, a little more exotic, and I believe that we're about ready to make a great breakthrough uh, in determining uh, the power of the mind, the m power of the mind to actually influence physical objects and to influence other human beings. Mm. And there's significant research coming along in that line right now, and I think that may be one of the great breakthroughs in the next 10 years. And you see the university? The university? Really? Yes, I see us doing this and uh, being one of the leaders in this area. Well, Dr. Trevon, it's been a pleasure having you on our show. Uh, the time went by very quickly. I, I hope uh, that we have continued success in all these areas of endeavor that you've pointed out. That will be our intent, sir. This has been President Arthur Trevant, the president of the University of Delaware, who's been here to tell us a little about the University of Delaware today and into the future. And I invite you, if you have any questions, to contact the administration at the University of Delaware. I'm sure they'll